Hey, Rocket Rolls coming at you from the great, gorgeous Prince George's. Um, as I say that, we're looking at all the freaking trash on the side of the road. What the hell? Um, yeah, so I just made the 2000 mile review video for the Honda Africa Twin. And after I made the video, I realized I really didn't talk about the electronics, which is something I promised I was going to do in the beginning of the video. So let's do a little quick video that just speaks specifically to the, 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 the rider aids and the electronics on the Honda Africa Twin. Now, let me tell you, first and foremost, you watch all these people do reviews on this bike, especially like the professional reviewers and the people and such. And the first thing they start complaining about is that the TFT display and the functionality is not intuitive. It's not intuitive. I don't understand it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, it's not intuitive, people. Um, it takes a while to get to understand it. But um, there's a difference between a reviewer who's borrowing or being loaned a bike for a couple of days or even just a couple of weeks and especially someone who owns four or five bikes or they run through four you know four or five bikes or 10 or 20 bikes in a year trying to learn how to use the tft display on a bike versus someone who purchases the bike who's committed to the bike and who reads the manual and wants to learn how to use the controls on their tft display it's apples and oranges um so yeah, I would say it took me, you know, I don't know, good week to get functional with the TFT display. And then it took me another five or six weeks to really get comfortable with it. And once I got really comfortable with it, I, I, you know, I went back and tweaked a few more things. You know, I might've programmed my user mode one and user mode two within the first couple of days. Um, I've reset my favorites button to be the button I use to change my rider modes. I love having riding modes, having riding modes because I can adjust down the power and make the throttle more sensitive. To me, that's a great asset to have when I'm commuting in traffic. It would be a great asset to have if I were riding the bike off-road in semi-technical terrain. When I say semi-technical, because it is a big bike and I'm not going to really be taking it into very technical terrain, I'm not that good of a rider. Um, but overall, the riding modes is a great feature. Um, I like having the traction control. People complain about the traction control. They try to turn off the track and con traction control. They complain about the ABS. They want to turn the ABS off. You can turn off the ABS. You can adjust the traction control. You can turn it all the way off. I keep it on. I keep it set at five in pretty much all of my riding modes. And set it goes from one to seven. Set at five, it almost never ever click cut, cuts on. I mean, and I don't feel it the times it has cut on. I just see the little light flash, so it did something. Maybe it saved my ass. I don't know. But um, traction control, I like having it. ABS. I love having it. And that's one of the reasons I traded in Cinnamon 1 for this bike. Because the CB500 that I owned didn't have ABS and CB500s don't have traction control. Um, and again, after 2,000 miles of riding it, I'm very comfortable with adjusting the controls, changing them the way I want to. I think the favorites button was initially set up to change the traction control. But since I'm very comfortable just leaving it set at 5, I went ahead and changed my favorites button to help me change rider modes because that's what I change more frequent than anything. Um, and I think there probably already was some kind of one button feature to do the riding modes, but since I didn't figure out what that was, I went with the favorites and I like having it set on the favorites. Um, the, see what else about it? I got 45 miles per gallon. I like being able to see that. 
I like the little adjustment that tells me the range. I like to tell me the instant instant moment mile per gallon. I like that feature. You know, it's telling me my voltage. It's, well, it tells me my gas, but that's always wrong. I mean, it does give me other information about my gas consumption, for example. So I actually, you know, I, I think I trust better the gas consumption that's telling me how much gas I have left in the tank. I think I, I trust that a little bit more than I do the, the gas gauge. Um, the Android Auto, I don't have Apple CarPlay. I use the Android Auto. I don't have it connected right now because you have to have the USB connector connected to the bike to use the Android Auto. And honestly, I don't really see a lot of value in it if you're riding around locally places you already know. Um, I am currently right now listening to, um, I think I'm listening to YouTube music through my Bluetooth. And for whatever reason, I'm feeding the Bluetooth through the bike. So I could use the bike's controls to adjust the music on my phone. Um, you hear a lot of those reviewers also complain about how long it takes for the TFT to warm up. Which, and you'll hear them say, oh, it's 15 seconds. I don't even think it's 15 seconds, y'all. I think it's like four or five seconds. And it just seems like an eternity because they're staring at it. And the reality is, I usually start my bike while I'm not even on it yet. I would not be able to start the bike and then get on it before the TFT warmed up. So you're literally like waiting like five or six seconds for the TFT to start. And then on top of that, because they do give you the two dashes, the TFT and the LED or LCD, LCD. The LCD comes on immediately. So immediately when you crank the bike on, you see what gear you're in and you see your miles per hour and your mileage. You don't really change your riding modes every time you get on the bike. You have a favorite riding mode and the bike is already in it. So you can start the bike, get on the bike and start riding is my point, especially if you were like off road or something. If you had left the, if you left the bike in one of the off-road modes or gravel or something like that, you start the bike back up, it's going to be in gravel. It's going to be in off-road. So there really isn't a need to wait for the TFT to start up that whole five seconds. So that's, you know, those are some of the things that you usually hear people really dwell on when they're doing the review. I think the one honest criticism that is just really a legitimate criticism is the height and the weight of the bike. And of course there, you, you know, you're buying an ADV bike, so you know it's going to be heavy. And it is lighter, by far, lighter than the um, BMW and the KTM, lighter than the Pan America. But, um, you know, not as light as the KTM 890, not as light as the Tenere 700, but it's also more powerful than both of those bikes. So there's a trade-off. It's sitting right there in that middle. If that middle is your sweet spot, you're good. If it's not, well, then go get one of the other bikes. I promise you I don't care what bike you ride. Um, but all in all, after 2,000 miles, you get very comfortable with the... Um, you get very comfortable with the electronics. Um, that's one thing I noticed. When people are panhandling, they don't bother to panhandle motorcyclists. I guess they figure we don't have like money sitting right in front of us in a cup holder or whatever. And or maybe motorcyclists are just, well, we are cheap bastards. So they probably just never want to give anything. Up. That's not true. Motorcyclists have great hearts. But yeah, panhandlers usually just walk right past you when you're in the motorcycle. When I'm sitting in the car, when I'm in the bins, you know, they, they're ready to knock on the window. But when I'm on the bike, they just keep on moving. Um, so all in all, 2,000 miles, I love the electronics package. Knowing what I know today, I would not buy one of the older Africa Twins that didn't have all of these um, electronic features. And as far as um, ADV bikes or tour bikes are concerned, I don't think I could go with a bike that didn't have the electronics packages, the TFT display the traction control, the ABS, the cornering ABS. I need that on my bike from here on out. I'm not going backwards. Now, if I'm buying like a little Supermoto or 
you know, a dual sport. I don't need all of that, and I, and I wouldn't expect it to be on those types of bikes. But if I'm on a bike that I plan on doing traveling on, um, significant commuting, or um, traveling, you know, interstate travel or intercontinental travel, anything like that, I'm going to want the electronics package. You know, the other piece is, as you guys know, I, I ride in all sorts of weather. I ride in the rain. I ride when it's cold out, potentially ice here or there. So I really do, you know, fully appreciate having this ABS and this traction control. Um, Ian of Big Rock Media did a video recently. I think I mentioned that in one of the other videos I posted this week. But he did a great video about myths about ADV bikes. And it's more of like a tips video. And, you know, he really went into good detail about why you should not immediately reach to turn off your ABS and your traction control. That you really should learn to use the ABS and the traction control on these big ADV bikes. And I wholly agree with him. I think it's a matter of learning when and how to use the tools. And there might be a time for turning it off. But too many people immediately run to turn off their um rider aids and it's just not advisable to me i mean they're there for a reason manufacturers are putting them on bikes for a reason and they're help they really can help you to manage these big tall heavy bikes um that's kind of that trade-off you know the bike is big and heavy you might be taking it in some difficult riding conditions and you need the rider aids to assist you in those difficult riding conditions. Um, it'll probably keep you from dropping the bike a couple of times. Um, oh yeah, they complain about the cluster. Um, but since I'm a Honda fanboy and dream of owning a gold wing one day, for me, the cluster is just training me to get ready for my gold wing. Um, they always compliment and talk about the cruise control, like, oh, it's got cruise control. That's great. I have not used the cruise control yet. Well, actually, I did accidentally turn it on one time, but I didn't even realize what was going on. And I haven't really mastered use of the cruise control. So here we are, four months out, 2,000 miles, and I haven't mastered control of the, of the cruise control. And that's probably why my gas mileage is only 45 miles per gallon and not 55 miles per gallon. Because if I figure out the cruise control, I can probably get that gas mileage up. We'll see what it is at the 4,000 mark. See if I do better. Ah, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. You going over there, bruh? Gone. What's that, north or south? That was south. I could have took that. Crossing the river. We're on Pennsylvania Avenue, headed towards downtown D.C. You can see the um, 11th Street Bridge down there. You see the Anacostia River over here. Um, you see they got the little, I guess that's a bike path. And then you see the railroad down there. Um, I forget, what's that? I think that's 1600 Pennsylvania Southeast. Not 1600 Pennsylvania Northwest, which would be the White House. Oh, lots of tr the trail cross. Oh, I need to come out here and check the trail out. Let's do that. Um, I'm, I haven't been, I don't, don't want to do that. I don't want to run it, walk it, bike it. And by bike, I mean pedaling. So, you know, there we go. The electronics on the Africa Twin are a great thing. I love them. If, you know, don't let it scare you is my point. If you don't want it, I get it. You know, go buy T7. Save the money, drop some weight down, and get a T7. If you don't want electronics, go buy a T7. If you are not intimidated by the electronics and you want them or you want the traction control, you know, strongly consider getting the Africa Twin. If you don't want to pay the money that it costs to get to the BMWs and the bigger KTM, you know, the KTM 890, I want to say that costs about the same amount as the Africa Twin. Um, so definitely that's a consideration. I don't think the the extra 200 cc's really makes that big of a difference. I want to say the horsepower is only maybe 10 different between an 890 and an Africa Twin. 
um, yeah, 890S or 890R. I could definitely see buying one of those bikes what you're gonna, if you wanted the electronics. But then you're not going to get that Honda network if you're one of those people that cares about where the dealers are and such. Um, I do a lot of my own work. A lot of KTM and Honda people do their own work on their bikes. So that's not that uncommon. Um, there's usually a bike parked over there, a little Yamaha. I don't see it. I don't see it. Maybe it's over here on this side. I think it's on this side quite often. And I don't see it over here either. Alright guys. Keep the video short. I, I just gave you my endorsement of the electronics package on the 2020 Honda Africa Twin. Um, standard edition. 1100. Blah, 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 blah. Click subscribe. Comment down below. Click the bell. Tell me what you think. What's your opinion on electronics? Um, you like them. You don't like them. You're indifferent about it. You don't want to spend the money on them. You're afraid that you might have to fix them. Let me know what you think. Rocky Rose. Over and out.